Good morning. I'm Chris with Everyman Overland, and I am here in the shop today so that I can introduce you to the new Morflate Air Hub. So this is something that I have been super excited about, and I don't know if the entire industry or everybody or all of you out there have been just as excited as me, but when I saw this a few months ago on their site, I was like, man, that thing looks cool, and uh, the settings, and it up, and it down, and the thing, and so I really wanted one. And now, and maybe I'm, I'm a month or two late to the game here, but I finally have one, and super excited about it. Let's go ahead and get this thing open. I'll show you what's in here. We'll show you how it works and we'll see if it lives up to all of my excitement. Okay, so inside of that box is this box. So this is the carrying case for the Air Hub. And this is a nice heavy duty, it's not a, it's not a solid, it's not a hard plastic case, but the whole thing is made out of, I think they call it, I don't know, EVA foam or EVM, something like that. So you open the thing up, you can see this hard, like cut out foam. It's nice and strong and durable, and it's, it's got a little bit of squish to it, so it will protect the Air Hub in all of your adventures, and it's bouncing around all over the place. But it's not that cheap, soft, open cell foam that is fantastic for like the first three weeks, and then after like a couple months, it, things just flopping around in there because it's all wore out, right? This is the good stuff. This is the EV, what, I'm not a foam expert, EV, what, whatever it is, the, the good foam. The, the good one. It's also got a nice little carrying handle on the top here so that you can carry this great big suitcase size thing around. And inside it comes with obviously the air hub itself. And then it's got a little charging cable because the air hub has a rechargeable battery in it, which I think is fantastic so that you don't have to worry about, oh, did I bring the double A's with me? It's just built in. And if the thing, like it might be nice to have just instantly replaceable batteries if it goes dead on the trail, but if it does go dead on the trail, like, you know, just plug it in. Like how many of us don't have like a car charger or some other form of charging here in our truck so we could just plug this thing in, get it up and running, you know, in a few minutes, whatever. So I like the fact that it's rechargeable. Now I don't have to worry about keeping batteries. Now I don't have to worry about buying them and replacing them and keeping them in the truck and it's just built in. Yay, it's a charging cable. <laughs> The Air Hub itself is actually a little bit bigger than I expected. Like you can see, I got some pretty big paws and it's it's almost as big as one of my hands. I just have to assume that the solenoids that are in here that turn the airflow on and off are just a certain physical size and we can't just do little teeny tiny ones because it wouldn't work real good, right? So they built it to the size it needed to be. I don't think anybody would build something this big that's designed to just go in your car and go everywhere with you unless it had to be this big. So it is what it is. So you can see the power button here, the on off button, and then the settings buttons on it there. It's also got a little hook on the back so that you can undo this and you can hook it to the front of your truck while you're using it or like the, like the, the little hooky thing on your hood latch. You could hang it up there, make it a lot easier to, to read. So you could just go just like that little hook. And of course the hook rotates around this way so it could be that way or it could be that way or whatever you need it to be. The last couple things to point out is it does have a nice rubber surround on it. So if you drop it on a hard surface, whatever, it's not gonna crack break. It's got a little bit of impact resistance to it. That's nice because it's not cheap, right? So you don't want it to die. And then of course it has it's got this valve down here at the bottom and that's what lets the air in and out. Uh, this is where you're gonna hook up. You're either gonna hook up your compressor or whatever air source to the bottom or if you're using this to deflate, you just leave this with nothing and that's where the air comes out. Let's go ahead and get this thing hooked up. I'll show you how it works. I'm gonna go dig my Morflate out of my camping equipment. It's all back there. You can see there's a, there's a good sized mess back there. And uh, yeah, we'll see how this thing works. I will show you that the kind of overall like basic design of this is very, very similar to the original Morflate Air Hub. Or as I'm sure you can recognize, all of the manifolds on these air systems are all very, very similar. Uh, I've seen one of them that actually had four hose couplings coming off of it. But beyond that, like every one of these I've ever seen has a gauge. It's got two hose couplings and then it's got the, the valve, whatever, on the bottom. Sometimes it's a little T valve that you can rotate this way and sometimes it's a slider valve like these. But one way or another, they all kind of show up like this with a gauge, right? Well, if you have a Morflate system or if you have a Proflate, or if you have, you know, a Thor's hammer, whatever it is, any one of these air systems, you can use the air hub with any of them, right? So you've got two hose fittings and a gauge. Look at that, two hose fittings and a gauge, and of course the little guy at the bottom that I'm using as a handle, but you just basically put this in place of the manifold in any one of these systems. So you don't have to worry about, well, I don't have a Morflate like I've got, I made one on my own and so, no, just right there, boom. What I will say is a lot of systems, Morflate included and a lot of the other ones, don't have these couplers here at the outside. 
Uh, this is an actual like Morphlate supplied it like this. They call it their stubby kit. And there are some others out there that have this and some don't. Well, if you have one of the kits where the hoses are still attached to the manifold, uh, don't worry. All you have to do is unscrew the hose from the manifold and then you can buy these couplings. You can buy this for this end and then you buy one that looks like that for the other end. It goes on the hose. It's all super simple. I'm positive you can figure this out. Morflate actually sells a conversion kit that you can order from them and it's, I don't know, it's 10 bucks or something like it, 10, $12, whatever it is. Or you can go to, you know, any one of your local hardware stores should have this. All of these things are kind of universal at quarter inch NPT. So if you just get the American style fittings and quarter inch NPT, obviously this one has to have a, you know, male thread that goes that way and the female thread for the hose, whatever. But as you take it apart, look at it, you'll figure it out. You'll be able to go to the hardware store. Yeah, I need that one. Or I need that one. Get them a little Teflon tape. Boom, you're done. And even if you don't go out and buy the air hub, it, convert your deal with the fitting. It's so much easier to pack these things away when the hoses aren't connected. You just boop, boop, you pop the hoses off. It all rolls up so much easier. So if you're watching this and you don't have a Morflate product, but you do have a four tire inflation system, don't worry. Air hub's still going to work just fine. Yeah. All right. So I have the thing hanging up here on the hood mostly just to make it easier for you guys to see. Typically when I set up my Morflate or any of these systems, I'll set it down here kind of on the front bumper and just run the hoses across like that because I don't like the hoses being up across the top of the engine. But up here, yeah, you can see it with the camera. It's really hard to see down here. So as we're hooking this up, I like to turn on whether, it, whether it's any one of the digital gauges on your smaller manifolds or if it's the air hub like this, I like to actually turn the unit on before hooking anything up to it because right now, like I've got the valve open, whatever, it's got zero pressure in there. But if it has any kind of residual pressure in there, every time you turn these things on, it resets itself to zero. So let's say you had somehow, you've got some residual pressure and you've got a few pounds. Now it's gonna be a few pounds off because you turned it on with the hoses hooked up or whatever. So I like to go ahead and turn it on, make sure it gets set to zero, and then I'll plug the hoses in and then I'll hook the hoses up to the tires. And that way I know it's been set to zero every time. And as you're doing this, make sure that this lower valve is closed. You push it up to open it and you pull it down to close it. So just make sure that that's closed. You don't want to hook it up to the tires and have those start leaking out and then over here and then uh, nothing's accurate, right? So just make sure that this valve is closed when you're hooking things up. Okay, so now we have the hoses hooked up. Everything's good to go. You can see we're sitting at 35.7 PSI and listen, all of these gauges are gonna be off by, you know, a couple of tenths or something like that. I think it actually says plus or minus two PSI, but most of them are within two or three tenths. Sometimes you get it as far off as a full PSI. What I like to tell people is if you've been using a standard gauge, you know, that you put on your tires, been using that for a long time and you have pressures that you really like, these are the pressures I wanna use based off of that gauge, right? See how that gauge compares to all any piece of new equipment, be it uh, a standard Morflate system or this air hub right here. If you've got a digital gauge, any other gauge, even another analog gauge, see how they compare and just take a look at it. And well, on the gauge that I've been using for the last five years, it says 35 PSI and this one says 37. Then just start setting this one to 37 and you'll get the same result as what you had before. I can't tell you that this one's more accurate or the other gauge is more accurate. Nobody knows, nobody knows which one's accurate, right? But if you had a setting that you liked, figure out how that correlates to whatever new equipment you get, right? And then just start setting that new equipment to where you know you're gonna be happy with those tires. All right, so let's go ahead and air down. So to air this guy down, all you do is set this lowering pressure. You can see you can change with the buttons for up and down. You can change it to wherever you want, anywhere from two to 125 PSI. I don't know who's running 125 PSI, but God bless you. So, I'm gonna set this to 12 PSI, which is what I run on the trails. So just get it like that, open the valve, and away it goes. Just like that. Now you'll hear, hopefully you can hear me over that thing. You'll hear it actually, oh, there it goes right there. You hear it stop, it's gonna start up again. What it's doing is it's learning how fast the air is going out because it doesn't wanna just like, uh, you know, stop paying attention and then check it in a little while, and all of a sudden you're down to four PSI when you're supposed to be at 12. So it actually, on, on every application, it will learn how fast the air is moving, and it'll stop two or three times throughout the process 
to make sure that it gets it right. So if it stops on you like that, it's okay. It's supposed to. That's what it's doing. It's doing its thing. Just let it go. And there it is. So when it comes to a stop, it starts flashing at you and making that horrible beeping noise. And I'm gonna make that stop because I don't like to do the beeping. You just have to turn it off, right? Like, okay, we're done now. You just turn the thing off, hold the button down and. Like I just showed you right there, before you, before you turn it off, right? Cause the solenoids have turned off the airflow. Make sure you close that valve. I didn't, and it got a little out. Anyway, it starts beeping at you so that you can hear because you're going to be off hanging out with your friends or whatever. It starts flashing at you to let you know, hey, I'm done. All the babysitting is over. Now we're down to 12 PSI right where we want to be. Now what we got to do is pop the hoses off, put everything away and go wheeling. This will not help you air down faster, right? The amount of air that's flowing isn't going to change because you're using this. What this does is it lets you walk away and not have to pay attention to each one, not have to squat down each time, you know, wait for the thing and check what to check it and then to go and look at it and then check it again. You don't have to do any of that. You just set it, hey, I want you to 12 PSI, you push play, and then you can go make yourself a sandwich or you can go secure other things in the vehicle or you can go help your buddies or just chat or whatever it is you wanna do, right? You don't have to babysit this because it's doing the babysitting for you. So now I'm gonna hook up an air source to this in this case, I'm gonna use my shop compressor because it'll go a whole lot faster because it holds a lot more pressure. And we'll show you how easy it is to air it back up to where it's supposed to be. All right, so now I'm just gonna hook up my, again, it's just a standard air hose. It's just a standard American style fitting. So let's go ahead and hook the air supply up to the inlet valve and we can get this thing up and running. All right, so we'll go ahead and turn it back on. And now we're gonna use the plus button. So you hit the plus button, you can see right now it's at 36 because I've used it once or twice before, but you put it wherever you want. So I'm gonna move it back to 36 PSI. We're gonna go ahead and open this valve and just let it rip. And the compressor's probably gonna make a lot of noise, but that's okay, because just as compressors do. And there you go. And there goes the compressor. And there you can see it just stopped again real quick as it's learning. It'll learn on the way up and on the way down. And boom, we're done. Now I'm gonna wait for the compressor to shut back off before I Keep trying to talk to you because it's loud. Okay, so I've got the compressor off now so you can hopefully hear me. So I did that airing up. It just happens to fill up real fast because I'm using shop air. And so it's holding and maintaining anywhere between 125 and 150 PSI. So it's gonna air up a lot faster than, you know, even like the Morflate 10.6 or any of the other dual compressors on the market. They just don't have the CFM output that you know, a 50 gallon tank at 150 PSI does. They just don't. Again, just like with airing down, this isn't gonna air you up any faster. It just lets you walk away and it does the babysitting and sets the pressure right where it needs to be. Anyone who's kind of followed my channel, you know I really kind of geek out on these air systems and compressors and whatever. I'm always messing around with them. So super excited about this. But you'll know that I have a Morflate 10.6 PSI Pro and that's the compressor or one of the compressors out there anyway that you can do the same thing. You can set what PSI you want, brr, it airs it up, and then it goes ahead and stops at where you need to be. One of the reasons I use the shop air right now, A, it's a little bit faster, B, it's, uh, I wanted to make sure you understood that there wasn't any kind of tomfoolery going on with, wow, the compressor's really doing it, it's not really this thing. We're trying to showcase the air hub, not the compressor. But also to show you that it doesn't have to be a small portable compressor. You can use this with shop air. You can use this with whatever onboard air system you've got on your vehicle. You can use this with a CO2 tank, power tank, whatever you wanna call it. Any air source that you can use to fill up your tires that has these American style fittings, or you could put these American style fittings on it, will work with the air hub. 
It doesn't have to be more flight specific. It doesn't have to be this, that, or whatever the other. If there's air going it, it'll work, right? So that's awesome. Let's, right, let me get this off the truck. I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, so the Morflate Air Hub does exactly what it's supposed to do, helps you out, acts as a babysitter while you're airing up and airing down. What do I like about it? So I've had the Morflate 10.6 PSI Pro, the compressor, for quite some time now. And I really like the fact that I can just push play on that and then walk away, go chat with my friends, go make a sandwich, whatever it is I'm going to do. I don't have to sit there with the compressor, shut it off, check the pressure, turn it on, shut it off. It just does everything on its own, right? And so this is just kind of an extension of that. This will do the same thing with airing up, but it will also do it with airing down. So I don't have to sit there and monitor. I can just hook everything up, tell it to go to 12 PSI. It does what it's supposed to do. That's pretty awesome. I wouldn't say that this is a required piece of equipment, right? Recovery equipment, uh, straps, and even an air compressor, something to air your tires up with, I would say are required equipment. I wouldn't go out in the sticks and the boonies without an air compressor. I wouldn't go out there with, without recovery gear so that even if I'm like being alone, I've got a winch on the front of Janky, but if I'm not alone, I've got other guys with me and we've got straps and we can connect and hook this up to that up just to make sure that you don't get stuck out in the middle of nowhere. This, not required equipment but it's really nice. If you find that this is within your budget, if you're good with it, I would say pick one up. It, it really does make things easier. What do I not like about it? Uh, the couple different things I don't really care for. Number one, it is fairly large, right? It's, it's bigger than I expected. Now, it's not like it's this big. It's not like it's the size of another compressor, but it's a little bit larger than I expected. It does come with a nice carry case and just about everybody is gonna have enough room to carry one of these things around. Even me and Janky, I run out of room real fast. Because it's got that nice protective case, I'll be able to find somewhere I can stuck it, stash it, whatever. I can get it in the truck, it's not gonna be a problem. So while I would prefer it being a little bit smaller, if that's just not gonna work for right now, that's fine. I can still bring it with me. The other part I would say is it's not exactly cheap, right? Right now at the time I'm filming this, these are being offered up on Morflate's website for $250. Now, I do have a 10% off code that I'll give you. I'll drop down at the bottom of the screen right here, put in the comments so that you can save yourself 10%, 25 bucks. But even at 225 bucks, it's still not cheap, right? My counter to that would be, how many of you guys have 200, 300, $400 worth of traction boards hanging off the side of your truck that either you never use or you use them to level up so that you, you know, your tent is level so you can level the truck. You're not actually using them to recover yourself. Or when you try to use them to recover yourself, all the, they just slip and they slide and the, that goes that way or they sink down into the mud. I've been on the trail, I don't know, half a dozen times where somebody broke out with some traction boards and not once, not once have I seen them work. And it's rare that people break out with them anyway, but everybody's got them, right? So for the same money, you could buy yourself this guy here I guarantee you, you'll use this and you'll enjoy this on every single trip you take, right? There's never gonna be a time where like, nah, it's okay, I'll just air up by hand. Nah, you're gonna use this every single time and it's gonna do what it's supposed to do every single time versus your hundreds of dollars in traction boards hanging off the side of the truck or your fuel cans. I mean, fuel cans are good for, well, let's just make sure that we don't run out of fuel on the boonies. How about just fill up your tank and don't let it get too low, right? So at whatever price they're offering this at, this will be a useful piece of equipment every time you go out on the trail. So yeah, it's expensive, but you'll get your money out of it. I think that's about that for the Morflate Air Hub. Not much else to show you, right? It helps you air up, it helps you air down, boom, there you go. I will say, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel because I've got a couple of projects coming up. You guys have seen where I compared the quarter inch hose to the three eighths hose and for whatever reason, a quarter inch hose is faster. It still doesn't make any sense in my head, but that's okay. Because I have this, and now I have a CO2 canister that you can't see down hanging off the side over there, I'm actually gonna do some more comparisons on the quarter inch versus three eighths, see if there's something I can do to make the three eighths an advantage instead of a disadvantage. So make sure you subscribe to check that out. Thank you so much to the guys at Morflate for sending this out to me, letting me get some time in with it. I'm sure I'm gonna enjoy this just like all the other Morflate products that I've got, they work fantastic, it's good stuff. And thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this was informative. I'll leave a link, I'll leave the code to get yourself your 10% off on this or anything else site-wide on Morflate's website. Drop that below. Thank you so much for watching. 
see you on the next one.